They want to give these big behemoth coal stocks the benefit of the doubt. And you can see here, macro-wise, what could possibly happen tomorrow? Again, if we can confirm the 10-day moving average tomorrow session. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessOfTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. So we have five days left uh, to the election. Again, I, I, I really, really encourage, and, and again, if, if anybody's been trading the market uh, for a long time, you, you see the difference between a market that is trading on potential new leaderships or the same leadership uh, continuing to stay in office than a normal market. Again, ranges are going to be tighter. If you're watching this broadcast for the very first time, you're going to see a tighter session until something breaks, kind of the levee separates and, and, and the water goes. And we have five days left, literally five days left from, from now to election night. Obviously, nothing will be um, kind of put to bed come November 3rd, but at least we'll give us a glimpse of our future. And I really encourage people trade for cash flow. Don't get a lot. You don't need a lot of exposure overnight just because of the sheer uncertainty of what's happening. And the most important part is you are going to get a lot of value throughout the days, most days, right? You're also going to see a lot of days that are going to be stagnant. So you have to really, un you have to really understand how to press uh, and pull back at the same time. And today was a session, for whatever reason, I traded very, very aggressively today when I didn't need to in the morning. Had a couple of uh, brain farts. Luckily, we had some good opportunities um, that I kind of, you know, kind of got back everything, uh, kind of got back everything and, and wound up on, on the right side of the ledger. But sometimes, you know, your brain as a trader, sometimes you know what not to do. Like, for example, I know don't smoke crack, right? Crack is bad. Right? I think we could all agree crack is bad. But once in a while, you'll turn around and a human being will do crack. Well, why are they doing crack? They know it's bad for them. Eventually, it's going to kill them, but they'll still do it anyway, just in case they don't die. And today, for some reason, I got very, very aggressive early in the morning. Um, for some reason, I, I had a major brain fart. Usually, again, every single trade needs to be confirmed. Every single interval needs to be confirmed. Uh, I took a stupid loss on DraftKings this morning. But again, we, did, we were fortunate enough to have enough value throughout the rest of the day that I was able to get hold. But it really does show you how, I don't care how, how long you've been trading, you're going to have that mental, that mental lapse of judgment. And sometimes, even when you know not to do something, all right? Say no to drugs, don't do crack. Sometimes you'll just take out the pipe and go, allegedly. Right, kids, if you're listening at home, watching at home, allegedly, allegedly, don't ever do that stuff. So that's kind of where we are. The one thing technically that I did like today, what I continue to see kind of from yesterday's session, if you guys remember, we sold off 650 points yesterday on the Dow. And the one thing I kept on kind of harping on over and over again in the live webinar and in um, the video at night, that we really didn't see any aggressive put buying coming in, especially ahead of earnings. And again, this is a very, very big week for technology earnings, for example, Microsoft uh, came out with earnings today. Uh, not pretty muted reaction. Had a nice move uh, pre-market. It's pretty, excuse me, it, regular market. It's pretty much flat uh, after the close. But what I like, what I saw yesterday, number one, the Qs uh, did hold, right? Did hold this rising support, uh, held, reheld, reclaimed the 50-day moving average. And now we're kind of back at striking distance, kind of where we were a couple days ago. You guys remember that 286 level? So this is still on the table. Remember, those, those levels are valid until new levels are formed, new levels uh, are pierced. So this level here is still very, very valid. And now we're getting close to some really big earnings coming up on Thursday, your Amazons of the world, your Googles of the world, Facebook, uh, so forth and so on. So it's very, very important that the bulls kind of hold the line to kind of pierce through. And again, going forward, guys, these are still the big levels. Uh, 286 continues to be the big level initially, and then any close above 288. But just in case things get very, very hairy, again, we have the bottom of the channel here, roughly 276. Uh, 76 is our area for a reference point to go down. Uh, again, what we saw today was some pretty good action. 
very, very, um, very, very expanded roles, meaning the electrical names were strong. Like, look at this NIO. I mean, what a move here today we saw. Uh, crazy call buying coming in. And not only just like the 30s, the 33s, we saw $40 calls uh, being traded as well. So this is a very, very strong stock, continues to be a strong stock, continues to get really, really good, um, aggressive speculation money hitting. And when you have a market that could produce a stock, a move like this, right? A move like this, the, the point is, is there really any fear despite the market going down? Like today, for example, yesterday, the Dow went down 650 points. We were talking about the whole time. There was no fear. Uh, today, the Dow was down 200 points. So you're talking about 850 points net net in 24 hours. And here we're talking about a stock that literally went from $13 to 32, actually 35 after hours. So the most important part where we need to kind of maintain, number one, remember, Every day is going to be different. From now to the election, every day, day is going to be different. There's no going to be two days alike. There's no going to be two days that are aggressive and passive alike. I think that we have to understand as well. So the most important part is, again, what we talk about every single day. Take it day by day, okay? Take it literally day by day. There's no reason to press. And the most important part is from now till election day just understand you're not going to get big aggressive money flow in most days again think about that think about this from the from the mutual fund index manager um hedge fund manager point of view right our future is uncertain until we find out who the leadership is so nobody's going to be putting real money behind an idea nobody's going to allocate 20, 30, 40 million dollars on an idea if they don't know what the implication is going to be next year. We don't know that. So I think there's a lot of money sitting on the sidelines. Uh, I know a lot of my friends, uh, they're passively in this tape right now. They're not really, uh, they're not really to the point of view that they're aggressively taking on positions, more kind of like surviving and patching days together till after election day. So you have to be very, very conscious of that. So I think we'll get a lot more clarity. Like somebody asked me today, is this normal? Is this a normal environment? It's not a normal environment. Not every single week, not every single uh, month, you you have a major election. A lot of people will turn around and make an argument. It's probably one of the more uh, important elections uh, in recent years. So it's very, very important, okay? Incredibly important uh, really to understand the dynamics of where we are. Again, take it day by day. Uh, if you have to trade smaller size, take faster profits, but just understand the market will be here five days from now. Okay. So if you don't need to be aggressive in this market, don't, it's very, very important to understand that. So, uh, going into tomorrow again, I, I want to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt just because how strong, uh, the NASDAQ names were, uh, Amazon reports Thursday, they had a nice spike today, uh, into the close, reclaim some big levels. Um, so that's very, very important. So you have a lot of speculation money continue to roll, not only into names like SRRK, but names like Amazon. Again, they want to give the stocks, they want to give these big behemoth coal stocks the benefit of the doubt. And you can see here macro wise, what could possibly happen tomorrow? Again, if we can confirm the 10 day moving average tomorrow session, remember they report Thursday after night. It's very it's very high, you know, it's very conceivable that we can get a really big run between now uh, and uh, Thursday session. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Some good things, some not good things. Some days, some things I just completely had a brain fart. It literally took me uh, pretty much all day uh, to get on the right side of the ledger, which was a little bit frustrating considering I over traded and really messed up a lot of trades. So let's talk about this. Um, so DraftKings. So I screwed up. Now, why did I screw up? 39, 20, 39, if it builds below. Again, I always dwell on the trades I don't make money on because those are the important ones. There's usually a reason why I screw up. It's usually not technically. It's something that I do mechanically. So stock already had a big run here and it didn't rally today and it put in a low of 39.35. So it put in its initial low of like 39.15. So I said basically 39.20, 39, if it builds below can flush. The problem is the first candles move was all in one candle. So I didn't wait for confirmation. So I didn't wait for that second move 
to confirm for the 10 o'clock candle. Again, this is what we talk about. You could trade 20, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, but at you know, times you will have brain farts and that's exactly what happened because if I would have just waited, right? What, if I would have just waited for that confirmation candle, uh, stock went, you know, only went down to 37.90. Again, it's a dollar, the difference between a dollar move, right? A dollar, dollar 20 move, uh, then me losing 50 cents on the trade. Now, again, is 50 cents the end of the world? Absolutely not. But again, that trade could have been avoided if I didn't if I didn't have the human side come out of me. But again, it is what it is. We're all human beings. So I got I got to hold the L for this one. Uh, Boeing, I scalped. Uh, Boeing, I scalped. And this is this really like the hardest stock to trade in the world these days? It really is. If, if you look at where, if you look where the stock closed compared to the pivot, it looks great on paper. I, to say I messed up this trade uh, is an understatement of the day. So 158.70, uh, if it builds below, can flush. So look where Boeing closed today, right? Stock closed at 54, right? Looks great on paper. Looks great on social media, right? Great call, Dan. You're a must follow, right? The nonsense. I scratched on the trade. Idiot. Complete idiot. So again, you can see uh, what we talk about. You have the days. Do you completely have mental farts? Today was kind of my mental fart day in the morning, and it took me all morning to kind of get to, to back to where I needed to be. But again, mental farts, mental farts, mental farts. This is one of the biggest moves of the day. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who swung the trade. And, and I said, this is not going to be a day trade, but any close above 10 is super bullish. Not sure if it's going to be a day trading stock, probably a longer hold. Um, I thought the stock was going to could have gotten to like the 1150 at some point next week. Apparently next week was today. This was an absolute huge move. Uh, congratulations, guys. So this was the $10 build, right? $10 build here. And the stock just exploded, went all the way up to $11. Really, really nice move, guys. Can, again, congratulations for all you guys who, who are holding this thing still. Uh, again, 1150 is the IPO high. Big, beautiful move potential there. Uh, you actually saved me. Of all things, you actually saved me. Uh, you rejected 104 twice, needs to build. Uh, here was letter U, right? So here was the 104 break. Uh, nice move here. The crazy part, it actually went as high as uh, to 108. Here's the crazy part. Look what the stock did in the middle of the day, right? So it goes from 104, this is the candle that we were long, goes to 104, goes to 108, reverses, goes all the way down to 95. You know, obviously I took on the way up, I'm not stupid. Uh, and then it runs back, and then it runs back uh, $8 from there. Again, again, if you could explain to me what happened there, um, it would be nuts. Uh, nice move on Square, uh, pre-market you know, pre pivot here, 173 rejected three times, needs to build. Uh, here is Square, right? So here is the 173, right? 173, 173, 173. Uh, nice pop here. Took out the 173, went to 176 before it kind of faded into the sunset. Uh, Amazon, it was big. This was a big pivot and it closed above a big range. Again, for all you guys who are holding Amazon overnight, there could be one more pop there tomorrow, guys. So here was the initial pivot. Uh, 3237 needs to build, right? So here was Amazon. Right, so here's the 3237 right here. Okay, so the first move was like 25 points, right? Big move. You can see stocks trade from supply to supply. So the first move was like 20, 25 points. The most important part, and again, it's being sold off a little bit after hours, but I, I think tomorrow it's going to confirm. Well, at least that's the plan. Uh, once it got above uh, 3285, okay, that was the big key here. That's where it closed, trading to the 3290s. So again, if you are holding Amazon, if it can just confirm tomorrow 3300, there's a lot of room here uh, into an earnings push. So keep an eye on that. Uh, Zoom, nice spike on Zoom. Zoom looks great. Okay, Zoom looks amazing. Um, you have crazy, crazy, you know, reports of different countries thinking about possibly locking down now. Uh, experienced traders only. The first move was to 531. So 526 needs to build for a 531 spike. That happened pretty seamlessly, right? So here was Zoom, right? So here was Zoom. Here was the here was the 531. You see this 526, 526, 526. So it traded right to 531. So once it got above the 534, and that's the pivot we talked about right before I logged off. Unfortunately, I didn't catch the second end of this. Uh, but 34 right here. Once it took out 34, and now it looks like it wants to test 
the previous day's high. And if this thing confirms and news continues to filter through, you could get an expanded move there. Uh, NVIDIA, nice, you know, nice move there as well. Uh, 531, 532 needs to build for a cash flow move to 535. It actually went a little higher than that. So here is NVIDIA, right? Here's a 60 minute view on NVIDIA, right? So here is 531 right here. Okay, this whole area here, 531, 532. Uh, went to like 537, uh, nice spike there. Uh, Tulo got destroyed. So here is the, you know, again, here's the point of pivots. We don't care which way they, they go. We just don't. Uh, 304 to the upside, 297 to the downside. And look at Tulo. Tulo got absolutely smashed. So here's the 97 and it went all the way down to 287. Big, big move. It's actually selling off uh, more after the close. Uh, Amazon, again, nice 20 point spike. Uh, again, Boeing, but before that new lows, right? Before new lows, I, I screwed it up. I really, really screwed this up. So again, it is what it is. Uh, beautiful move. PLTR, huge move on PLTR. Uh, you take on the way up. And again, this is the point. Uh, any close over 32.84 is bullish ahead of earnings. So nice 10 point spike ahead of that number, above that number into the close. So uh, yeah, I mean, crazy day. I, I, I kind of did I kind of did uh, over trade today, but again, you're going to have those days that uh, your hum humanity comes out and stupid things start to happen. You uh, overthink everything or don't think of anything at all. And then next thing you know, you're, you're fighting back and you're crawling back. The, the good part about uh, today's session, I stopped myself at some point uh, in the morning. If you guys remember, I said to myself after... Which, way, which trade was it? Uh, after Zoom, because I shorted Zoom also, which you guys didn't see uh, on the Twitter feed. We had a Zoom short as well that went from like 18 to 13. I shorted some Zoom to make, you know, to make back some losses. Um, but I, after Zoom, I kind of just stopped. I kind of literally stopped and I said, you know what? Let me kind of, you know, let me kind of get my head together. And that's what happened. And then all of a sudden, uh, letter U broke out and yada, 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 finally, uh, finally did the right thing. But yeah, crazy day. Uh, again, I have no expectations tomorrow. I am by bias. Again, we'd like to see everything confirm. Okay. I think that's the key. Obviously I will not be, uh, preempting or, or anticipating the moves. We have to let everything confirm. And if the bull, if bulls can just reclaim that QQQ 286 level, I do believe we'll start the next leg up guys. God bless. Have a great night, everybody. And I'll see you all tomorrow.